Hi everyone, thanks so much and welcome back. It's wonderful to see you. I'm back out here uh, on the trails. You guys, this is where this is where I am daily. I love the walks. Uh, this is the channel that checks the boxes for you. I'm so happy. It's such an honor uh, to just connect with you every, every day, guys. So I'll ask you if you haven't already done so, Please go ahead and, and make your wish. Make your wish on this, at the beautiful water's edge. I made my wish. You guys, wishes, dreams, hopes, goals are so important. And you know what? What I love about it, wishes, dreams, hopes, coming true every day. Coming true every single day. Uh, I wanna go ahead and get right to the topic today. Um, relationship butchers, relationship butchers, guys, <laughs> um, why people cut you off, why people cut you off, and quite frankly, um, what you, what you can do about it, what you can do about it. Um, the inspiration, uh, for this video just came from a, a conversation that I had with someone a week or so ago who just had been um, cut off very just very bluntly and you know the person didn't really know what what was going on was in a bit of emotional distress so I thought you know what I don't I don't think I have dealt with this topic of being cut off so I think it's uh it's it's apropos uh, for the days we're days and times we're living in. The first thing that I want to say is, <laughs> if you are a relationship butcher or you have been a relationship butcher, uh, and I use that term kind of tongue in cheek, and you just your solution is to uh, cut people off. That's kind of the the go to. This video will be helpful for you, as well as on the other side, um, if you're a person who's gone through it and you're just looking for uh, some insights, this will be a, a wonderful video as well. So the first thing I wanna say is um, if you cut, if you cut anything enough, <laughs> whether it's relationships, whether it's meat, whether it's fabric, if you keep cutting into it, eventually there just won't be anything left. <laughs> so it's really a timely message because I know a lot of people who are operating in isolation um, really because they've cut and in some instances they have unnecessarily cut their, their relationships that could certainly have been certainly have been viable viable for them so going further into the content uh, why do people why do people cut others off um, it can be for a variety of reasons the primary reason I've seen is people will cut others off um, because they don't want to get hurt they don't want to get hurt there may have been sensitivity or there may have been some pain uh, in the past and they just want to avoid it. I know at one point I went through something, I was back to back, really devastating relationship situations and I was so shut down. I was shut down for really about a year and a half and I have to tell you in that time if I was dealing with someone and I so much as get the hint. I so much as get a hint that a similar hurt or a similar wound was going to happen. I would just, I would cut it off um, and think nothing of it. 
and think nothing of it. So it was really uh, just a, re a reflexive, reflective um, behavior on my part. I was trying to protect myself. So another reason that people will cut others off abruptly um, and sometimes unnecessarily is that communication, that muscle of communication is not there. It just has not been developed. There are things that will happen inside of relationships that a simple communication, a question of clarification, I'm not sure what you meant by that, what's going on. And if that muscle is not worked, what people will do is kind of go inside their own, their own psychological shell. They will have a high powered question and answer session with themselves and they'll never go to the source. And really what that has to do with is um, emotional immaturity around communication. I mean, I've seen it. <laughs> I've worked with so many people over the years and how many times have I asked, well, did you go to them and talk to them? Well, no, it's obvious. You know, I'm telling you guys, misunderstandings abound. You have to realize to constantly look at things from your perspective, it's a guarantee that you're going to have trouble in your relationship. One of the things that I've learned over the years, as I've come into more maturity, allowed God to work with me, through me is relationships, all of them require a certain amount of bandwidth. I'm not saying let people walk over you or on you. I'm saying that relationships require a certain level of bandwidth and understanding. People are going to mess up. People are, are teeming with hopes, dreams, envy, desire, wishes, misconceptions, that's why we have communication as a tool of clarification. So really, those are the primary reasons. And thirdly, sometimes a person will cut you off because simply the alignment, the alignment is not there. Something that you did, they may deem it just egregious. Uh, there, there's no understanding. You're on totally different pages. And they may be emotionally mature to communicate. They just choose not to. And the other thing to realize is people have options, guys, on who they want in their life. They have options on whether or not they want to do things or continue the conversation. And this is the reality. And you can sulk about it. You can stew about it. Or you can find your way to get on with things. It's just that simple. So I want to talk to you a little bit about what you can do if you're on the receiving end of being cut off. Uh, the energy does not feel good, um, but I feel for myself um, the times that it has happened and you go through life, it happens. I feel like I've really developed um, a winning strategy for these instances. And I want to go ahead and share that with you today. First, I want to explain why it is exceedingly rare that, you know, the times I've, I've been cut off, it's exceedingly rare that I launch a full frontal effort to pressure anyone back into a conversation or back into a relationship. I will tell, I'll tell you exactly why because I feel in my heart of hearts, I've just been on the planet long enough, that man's rejection, first and foremost, man's rejection is almost always God's protection. There can be things at play that what's going on behind the curtains, you don't always know what is happening in the backdrop of a person's life and oftentimes, the hand of God will come in, you will experience that blunt cut, and it's really for your own good. I'm gonna give you an example. Some years ago, really good friend of mine actually, I mean, she just dropped the ball completely. 
I'm like, what's up? No return calls, no return emails, <laughs> no return texts. And I push the issue. I'm like, you know, what? what's up? What is going on? Comes to find out. She finally gets back in touch with me because I was pushing the issue. And she had gone through a divorce and comes to find out another friend who was in our uh, friendship group she had actually taken up with this friend's husband. They were actually seeing each other. She got back in touch with me and let me know this. Now you could imagine that really threw me into, I was in a pickle of a situation. Here she is, you know, she had been a friend for years, another messy situation on the other side. And I just backtracked and said, you know what? I wish I would have gone with my first mind my first mind and just let her go on because now I really wish I'm not in touch with you and I'll tell you why and my first mind was to send her a little note and say you know just reaching out concerned about you and if you ever want to talk the door is open that's what I should have done in that circumstance and that's what I have done that's what I have done and did moving forward. Because you guys, that covers the bases. I like to leave a door open because I know that people can go through seasons in their life of disillusionment. They're not thinking clearly. All manner of things, going through emotional upheaval and turmoil. And so sometimes they will push you away uh, so they can deal with themselves or the hand of God will come in and push them away So one of the things that I do Hey, if I don't know what's going on. I send a little note. I'm here to talk uh, the door is open and You know Godspeed God blessing to you and I will tell you it's powerful. It's effective I don't do a hard, you know a full court press anymore to keep a conversation going or to keep someone around because I'll say it again, man's rejection, can't stress it enough, man's rejection uh, is God's protection. I also want to say in terms of uh, cutting off, cutting off relationships, I think people would do that less <laughs> or do it or do it with some class on the other side. If you understood um, the energy, <laughs> the energy that that produces, if someone is not spiritually centered, if that emotional maturity is not there, it can really throw them into a depression or a psychological spiral, and they're just not knowing what is going on. So this final, this final suggestion, uh, really. You know, if you're that person and you just kind of spiral out and ruminate, uh, this final suggestion I really feel can pack a punch for you. Um, one of the things that happens when you get cut off, you don't get that closure. You don't get that closure. And a lot of people think that you need to connect with someone, you need them in front of you to get that closure, and you don't. I've done a whole series, I've done an entire series on secondary closure and I invite you to look it up here on YouTube um, in secondary closure you can really capture that uh, by having a spiritual conversation with the individual express what you want to express say what you want to say I've done this in the past by simply lighting a white candle you know make sure your room is quiet and you go ahead and you give yourself the closure you need you can write a letter and read it at this time or you can basically freestyle but it's really important that you give yourself some type of closure for your mental health to go ahead and move on and folks if if you rely on people for that uh, you're gonna be in a world of hurt <laughs> oftentimes you're gonna be in a world of hurt because there is a there is a prolific rise of casual cruelty and these things will happen. And also, um, I want to close on a message to those who routinely, as a way to protect yourself, um, you cut people off. 
I want to say that there is a better way because you also experience the toxic energy uh, of that cut. And that's not to say there's some instances and there's some people we do just need to immediately cut off for reasons of disrespect, what have you. I'm really talking about the circumstances that have some health to them. The relationship has some healthy aspects. It has been of benefit to you. It could be of benefit in the future. And it really deserves um, more respect than to close that way. I'll go back to what I said at the start of this video. You know, I myself, there was a time I just cut because I could not, I, it, it, there was no part of me that could even think about entertaining <laughs> that kind of pain. And the truth is, I was just scared. I was afraid to be hurt. I'll tell you this, people talk about trusting other people in relationship, live with an open heart. I now understand it's not about trusting people. It's really not. It's about trusting yourself to do the right thing and trusting that you've learned the lessons and you synthesize that information so you can make solid choices, good choices in your relationship. I did that work, rolled up my sleeves because I don't want to be one of these people that's running around in fear, paranoid of other people. I have an open heart. I have an open heart and wisdom. And when people, I don't hear from them or it seems, oh my goodness, you've cut me off. You know what I say? I say a little prayer and I say, how unfortunate, not for myself, but I say, how unfortunate, how unfortunate for them. They missed out on a terrific, a terrific lady. <laughs> Some of you may say, well, Sheila, that's kind of self-serving. It's not self-serving. It is self-esteem. It is self-esteem, guys. It's not self-serving at all. It's really how I feel. I'm growing this muscle. And I will tell you, this work, it is a gift. It's a gift that you give yourself. And ultimately, you will know the tree by the fruit that it bears. Many people are taking an isolated walk, a lonely walk, because that muscle of communication, the muscle of empathy, sympathy, and giving your relationships that bandwidth has just not been utilized. And I will tell you, you can get through, you can get through this world alone. You can certainly do it, <laughs> but it's not that fun. <laughs> it's not that fun and it's not that, that elevating and uplifting. So guys, think about this for the relationship, butchers of the world, a strong message for you, as well as the people who have been on the receiving end of that energy. I hope something I've said has made a difference for you guys. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.